And we are back. So let's go ahead and let's do some um, problems with confidence intervals. So I have a bag of marbles, 765 marbles here, so large sample size. I measure the diameters, find that I have a population mean of 200 mic uh, millimeters. Um, population standard deviation is 20. So again, we can do mu equals 200 millimeters. And then we say that standard deviation of our population is 20 millimeters. And I need the range of marbles where I can expect to find 60% of the marbles in the population, excuse me. So let's go ahead and pull up our little handy dandy Mathematica. You can do this with your Z tables as well. Um, it's, it's quite doable, but um, this is easier. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead. So I need to find, I need to solve first. So I need to integrate the function f of z, and I need to find the z range, z from minus x, uh, let's, let's call it z1, to um, positive z, uh, let's say minus z1, z1. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's see if we can do this. Integrate this, we need this to be equal to 0.6. Um, so let's go ahead and solve. Let's solve, and let's solve. And hopefully, let's just, let's try to help Mathematica around a little bit. Um, so we see that this should be the value of z now. But we're asked again the range of a marble diameter. So what we can do then is solve, or I can do my z function. We know that our, um, so we don't know what our x measure and is. We do know what our mu is, which is 200. And we know what our population standard deviation is. So I'm going to go ahead and solve. Solve when does, when does this z function, what x will give me this for x? And I see 216, and we have to always do the negative. So between 130, 183 and 216, that's going to be where we find 60% of the marbles in our population. Excellent. Now, working at a materials company, measure the UTS. We have this, we have this. What is the probability that I find a sample that exceeds a UTS of 350 megapascals? So if we want to draw this schematically, we can see, and actually we can find, and we'll we'll do it like this. So here's going to be our mu of equals 303. So we have our Gaussian distribution, uh, and this is our value of 350. So it's to the right. So what's the probability of finding a sample that exceeds this? So I need to look at basically this area. So from 350 onwards. So if you were to use the tables. The tables, if you just plugged in 350 minus this and then you integrate this, that's only going to give you this area and then you'd have to do basically 0 0.5 you know, uh, minus that to get the remaining area. Um, if you use Mathematica, on the other hand, um, or if you integrate the function, so I can just say, for example, um, I want to integrate though. So I'm going to do my z function. So our x measure and is going to be basically 350. Um, our population mean is 303 and then 33. So this would be the z function. So not f, n. So I am going to integrate and then I'm going to go integrate my f sub z from z in terms of z from this z value because again I want it to exceed that 350 to infinity. And let's go ahead give me the number numerically. So very low probability. So about 7.7% of that will actually happen. And you could double check that with your table measurement if you would like. All right, I'm measuring the voltage in my Helmholtz coil apparatus. I find after 150 experiments, good, large sample size. Uh, population mean mu is this, population standard deviation is this. How many voltage measurements fall between 10 and 15? So we can do something similar here. So I'm gonna do integrate, um, f sub z, and between my z values will be a z, z function where my measure and is um, 10 volts, population mean is 10, and then the standard deviation is 5, so 3.4, and from a z function of 15, 10, 3.4, so this is the percent, like, or basically it'd be 42%. So it's asking for the number of measurements, so I need to multiply by 150. So about 64 experiments will fall in that range. 
Excellent. Measuring the pressure in a thin uh, cylindrical pressure vessel, I find uh, my mu is this, my sigma is this. Took 120 measurements. How many measurements fall between 35 and... So this would be something similar here. So I can actually adjust this. So we took 120 measurements. Now we find that our... So we need to find between... So 35 is our x. Our mu is 39. Our sigma is 4. Between that and 45, 39, 4. Solve it numerically. And we can get those values. So about 92 measurements will fall between that range. And then it's asking us how many less than 35. So I can take that as the range. Actually, I have to go from 35 would be the big one there. So I can go from less. I need minus infinity. Infinity to this. So that would give me the number here, 19. And greater, or how many less than 45 minus infinity, and I would just change the 45 here. There should be a lot of measurements. Yeah, almost all of them. So about 112. So you can do, again, all of these operations, and you can draw and visualize um, basically in your, t in your Z table too. And we have done this in class. But um, hopefully you see the benefit of Mathematica. So we will see you all in the next video. Thanks. Bye.